Hello, this is your phantom safety pin, and welcome back to Let's Play Spore, Creature Stage. Now, you might notice our creature is a little different from normal, but before I go into that, I wanted to show off a cool little detail. If you stand on the center of your nest and look up and move around a little bit, you can actually look right up at the night sky. Quite interesting, I thought. But anyway, you might notice our creature looks a little different from normal. A little bit different from normal. And that happens to be because, well, off-screen I did a little grinding and I did a little part collecting and added a few new details. For example, those spikes you see on the back of my creature now, they add some health, the feet are different, the mouth is different, and, well, there's a few more detail parts that I've cleverly hidden on my creature. So they don't show, but they're there. That's actually a very, very common tactic if you want to hide eyes or mouths on your creature and make your creature look like it doesn't have a mouth or eyes, is to hide the mouth or eyes. And these Wootsie are just everywhere. They're not a friend of us. So we're going to move on. Say hello to these guys. Weirdo, and what a weird creature it is. This is apparently created by somebody named Woofle 9 So very, very interesting and strangely majestic creature, Woofle 9 Very well done. We don't really have the sing skills, but we do have the detail skills now. And the reason I did all this off-screen is because I just didn't have the ability to get any new allies or anything, and I really wanted to be uh, adaptive, an adaptable creature and be on the track with the blue instead of the green or the red. So I changed my details a little bit, changed stuff around, and did that off screen because I figured, you know, you probably don't want to see all that. It was very boring and basically just me wandering around for 15 minutes trying to befriend creatures and failing all the time. So, as you can see, we've acquired a new skill pose thanks to our graspers. Which is excellent, really. And here you go. We are pretty much good to go. We have allied these weirdo almost. And we're getting some parts for a couple. Look at that baby one. It's actually really cute. Look at how many little look at those giant eyes of it. So cute. And again, we don't really have the sing skill to pay the bill, but everything else is set. And we have a whole pack this time, so there's no way we could get screwed over this time, surely. No, well, that didn't quite work as intended, but we tried. But as I was saying, um, you might notice that the number of creatures who kind of help socialize tend to stack, so to speak. The more creatures that are trying to socialize with you, the more difficult it will be to impress them. So, a lot of the difficulty comes from just one creature being allied by his buddies to help impress them. Which is why you want a lot of people. So I'm, I'm, which is why you want a lot of creatures in your pack with you. So I'm gonna try to round one of these weirdo off to the side, decide if I can push him around and get him alone. And this can be a little bit tedious, so bear with me as I try to kind of herd these creatures a little bit away from most of the pack. Get them. Oh, looks like my pack is helping a little bit, or not. I've succeeded in getting them furthest away, but too bad I can't get them any further away. <sighs> Cue the Benny Hill. And there we go. Finally got one of these guys alone. Or, well, mostly alone. But two is much easier to try and impress than one, especially when you outnumber them. But just a general rule to remember is always try to have more creatures in your pack than the creature you're trying to ally has in their pack, and you'll be fine. And excellent! We have finally gotten our brain reimbigged. We got a bigger brain now, we are a little bit smarter, and we are able to add one more member to our pack. You might notice I have a way different mouth, and that's because, well, I changed the mouth. And I also changed our strike parts. And all that DNA has gone to our heads. Meaning, again, one more creature can be added to our pack. 
So let's all head on back to our home nest, try to avoid these wootsies that don't like us very much. For some unfathomable reason. Sneak on by then, head back home, and grab a new member for our pack. Maybe add some more details to our beautiful, beautiful, majestic, uh, Fantagool here. As you can see, our timeline is moving us up towards the adaptable portion, which is exactly where I want to be. Gonna add this guy to my pack. You really don't want to bother adding the babies to your pack, because they're really not strong enough. After all, they're babies. And I believe... did I decide to call my mate here? Guess not. I thought I had decided to contact my mate and make some babies, but I guess I wanted some more DNA first. Or did I... huh, I think I changed my mind. I'm not sure what I'm doing here now. Yeah. Yeah, I changed my mind and decided to go back and talk with my mate and... Oh dear, okay, I got a little bit stuck here. Occasionally that happens and you do need to move around a little bit. And I don't know what happened to that one. <laughs> Look at that dance. <laughs> Look at that dance. That was funny as hell. I don't know why that was so amusing, but it was very amusing to me. And there's a couple different dances your creature can do. Actually. That's just one of them. And I don't know why his tentacles got stuck like that. A little bit odd. So I decided to spare you the details and cut everything out. But, well, it doesn't matter. We add, we add some new details and, well, our creatures are about to migrate. Goodbye. We've just outgrown our nest and it's time to go meet a new one. Oh, look at these babies! Look how cute they are! They're so tiny! Aww. Well, our species is migrating to a new nest, so I'm going to use a little cheat, hit the escape key to make him grow up a little bit faster, and head on down the trail towards our new nest. Hopefully it'll be one a little bit closer to water. Well, closer than this. I did think about maybe going back to the to our old nest, but decided against it at the last minute, because I felt it just really wasn't that worth it. And we did have an area near water anyway. Now the reason having a nest near water is so important is because, well, later you're going to want it for tribal and eventually city, because it will allow you to build boats in city, and it will also allow you to fish more easily in tribe. But we're going to ignore all that now and just focus on getting these parts here first and trying to make our way to our new nest. Now I did make a little bit of a detour here to head off towards these guys, my Dork Lefil, which are another creature I've created, intended to be a plant creature. Now, you might be wondering, okay Phantom, what did you change on your creatures to make it a little bit easier to social? Well, I added, you might see it poking through the tops of the tentacles there, but I added the hair glomite part, which adds charm. I added a piece that adds health, and I added some sporsal fins, which will help me sprint. So now we can also run. And you're going to wonder, well, Phantom, why is running important? Well, I say because pleasures. And I pressed the wrong button, but it's okay, because it looks like that was about to work anyway, so... I guess I pressed the end button just a little bit too soon. Now, I do want to point out that the Dorklefil and our Fantagool have the same mouth part. Or do they? Actually, I believe the Fantagool have a uh, slightly more advanced mouth part, I'm not positive. You can see the difference in how much uh, just adding a single charm part can do. Which I believe I did. I believe I did take those charm parts off later, but I kept them on for now. You might be wondering, Phantom, why'd you put the spins like that on their back? Well, I thought it looked cute. Thought they looked like wings. And look how awesome we're doing here. And check out their awesome tentacle beards. Come on, those are awesome. So we're just going to finish off impressing these Dwarf Lefil. This is actually a lesser evolved species of a different creature. Now you can notice on these Dwarf Lefil where their arms are placed. I place them up at the top and their head at the bottom. 
their eyes are actually hidden in their mouths. Which is how I created them. Which made it... Makes it look really, really cool, I think. Makes them look their eyeless, and, you know. My intent with the Dorkophil was, indeed, to just create a creature that was pretty much a plant creature. In fact, those, uh... The Leoch series of mouths, which I'm using on, um... Fantagool here, are kind of classified as plant mouths on the Spore Wiki. I tend to classify them as sort of weird leech insect mouths, but... Well... Doesn't matter. They're basically lamprey mouths. And uh oh. Look at. Oh. I thought. Huh. Never mind. They look like they were going to be aggressive. I guess not. But. If I can get close to one, we'll. Aha! Uh -huh. Oh, not. To ice Ice Baby. Yes, somebody named their creature Ice Ice Baby. You encounter some very, very weird creatures here, and. Fortunately, no penis monsters. Yeah, a big problem with Spore when the game started up was people would create, of course, dick monsters. And a lot of dick monsters. Which just ended up being a huge annoyance to everybody concerned. So a lot of them got banned. Because, you know, of course, it's an E-rated game. It's supposed to be friendly for children. I'm gonna try to... Uh, friendly these guys, but we just don't have a strong enough dance skill yet. So we're gonna ignore them and continue on. They are quite majestic looking, though. I wish I could have, uh, allied them, made, made them a pet in tribal. They'd have looked really cool. They'd look like cows or something. With the giant horns. Those African cows with big horns. Trying to move our way past and- Wow, look at those tentacles on our- on our creature's head, just going blah, 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 all over the place. I'm gonna try to befriend these guys, see if they're interested in being friendly. <laughs> Looks like they might be, so let's try to impress them. Looks like we're doing well so far. Seem to really, really, really like dancing. And yes, it's not uncommon for a creature to have uh, itself just dance four or five times in a row, rather than do anything else, even if it has parts that will let you do other things. Don't ask me why. I really like the the design of this Delector. I, I, Delector, whatever. I, Delector, yes. Exterminate! Delector, or whatever. I, I like the design of it. We don't really have the pose game for it, and that's because I realized just now I completely forgot to put the right hands on the creature. I changed their arms and I forgot to change the hands last time I did any details, so we're not going to be able to pose too well. And I realized that now, so I decided to just kind of head to my new home and, well, get this first, head to my new home and pick up the correct hands I would need. And those are very basic hands and feet, by the way. Um, those little nubby toes and whatever. They're very weak creature parts, so... Keep that in mind when we encounter a certain species later. Ah! Looks like we found our nest and we're home. Gonna make our brand new nest, establish it, and get ready. Wow! That's a big nest! And there we go. And this actually isn't too bad a spot. There's a lake off to the southeast there. Well, southwest there, sorry. And I did do some pausing to uh, go grab a drink while I was in the middle of recording. I was quite thirsty, but back again. I'm gonna pick up these pieces here. And hopefully realize sooner rather than later that, hey, I don't have the hands I need, which I did realize. So, gonna zip in here, mate real fast, and, uh, change those hands up. And now the hands we need are back. I also changed the feet, and I believe I changed the mouth parts. And there's another creature I created, the pig fly. One of the few herbiv orbivor uh, yeah, herbivorous creatures. I've created. Is that the way to pronounce it? Herbivorous? Herbivorous? I'm not sure. I'm gonna go... Oh dear! Looks like we're being attacked by this guy. That's unfortunate. Oh dear! Now the baby's getting in on the action. 
I didn't really want to fight. That's unfortunate. I think we feel sad we had to extinct that species. They're so cute. They created them to be adorable, you know. But I guess they just really did not want to be friends. Too bad. Oh, there we go. About time to phase through a tree and go try to befriend a new person. New creature, rather. As you can see, we do now have our pose hands back, and that should make it easy to befriend these guys. We're quite tough now with 44 health, and our, uh, our alphas having quite a great deal more health, because we've added so many... Oh! Well, that's fascinating. Look who's arrived. Looks like we've had an alien show up. An alien spaceship. One of the few interesting things that can happen in Creature Stage in the skies. The other is you can occasionally get a meteor shower. Um, this spaceship appears to belong to a species, an alien race known as the Grox, and it looks like they're kidnapping creatures. Oh dear, they're abducting animals. Not good at all. We have to get out of here. As quick as we can. Hopefully they'll, they won't notice us. But yes. Um, the Groks are a race of aliens that will come into play much, much later. And I'll explain them when we get there. But until then, you don't have to worry too much about them. So, we're going to have to unfortunately wait until... Oh, look at this interesting creature by Wolf411. Petrifying Lovecraftian Ghoul. I love it. Very, very well done. Now, you might have noticed a little bit of a fade out there, and that's because, well, I accidentally deleted some of the footage uh, for the original part of the game. So I had to repeat the process on a different planet. So here I am, uh, showing off a rogue animal. This particular animal. If you, if you befriend a rogue animal, it will give you a lot of DNA, but if you all... If you kill a rogue, it will also give you a lot of DNA. Rogues are quite powerful. They have 250 hit points. And they're really particularly not... Oh, god damn it. Seriously, alien? Now? You really have to show up now? I'm trying to befriend these guys. God, aliens are such dicks. I mean, seriously, they're always leaving crop circles, always abducting things. Psh, who needs aliens? Go back to your own planet, aliens. I'm very sorry, I didn't mean to offend any aliens in the audience. Live long and prosper. Now anyway, it's kind of interesting to watch the aliens fly around. I believe I pointed out that sometimes aliens will show up on your planet and creature stage, as well as tribal stage, the next stage, and pretty much just proceed to ruin your attempts to befriend creatures entirely. Now, you can see we don't have a cell stage marker, and we don't have the ability from cell stage, and that is because I had to start this part over from creature stage on a new planet, which is why we have the different colors and different sky and different plants, but the idea is still the same. And that alien's still flying around, and that's beginning to annoy me. I really would like it to go away now. Yeah, 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 take your sweet time, alien. Take your sweet time. There seems to have been quite an influx in the original spore of uh, humanoid creatures wandering around, as well as, well, monsters shaped like genitalia. Some people are quite immature, or perhaps they just don't have much of an imagination. Anyhow, I'm going to dig up these bones, and now that alien's gone, we can go befriend this rogue. Uh, Hominidio? Hominidio? How many Dio? I don't, I, I don't know how to pronounce that. Whoever created it, if you know the person who created this creature, could you help me figure out how I'm supposed to pronounce the name? So, we'll just show off to this dude. And pretty much just see if we can uh, befriend him. Not an easy task, but it gives us a whopping 250 DNA. Which is excellent. It gives us quite a boost. You noticed how quick that gauge grew. 
you can find one more uh, rogue to befriend, then this will be an easy rest of the game for us. Or at least, rest of this level. And if not, well, there's always all sorts of stuff. We are, after all, omnivorous, and that will give us a bit of a leg up in the competition. For example, these Grondo might want to be friends with us. I'm here I am trying to decide if I should befriend these guys or what I should do, and I do decide to go befriend them, I think. Or do I? Nope, guess I was going to eat first. And if you're wondering, yes, those Grondo are a another creation of mine. In fact, many of these creatures are my creation. Not all of them, but there are quite a few of mine in here. I see them quite often. And that will happen as you create more and more creatures. The Maxis ones will tend to disappear or be less common. And also as you download more people's spore casts and their creations, more and more creatures that, that other people have made will show up in your game. Rather than uh, just Maxis creatures. Ah, now I remember. I believe I decided to go make a baby because I had a whopping 265 DNA. And I spared you the details because nobody wants to see that. But I did change a few things up. I also... I believe I went to go... I hit the wrong thing there. I was gonna save or maybe I cut it out. I don't remember. But now we are going to go explore some more and find some more creatures to befriend or kill, as a matter of fact. In fact, I think we would probably do with some killing, don't you? And I thought about killing those guys, but do I? Ah, yes I do. Another Maxis created creature. Excellent. We're going to kick these guys' butts. I've got some pretty awesome tools on under my belt. You can see I have three different ways to attack, which will really, really kind of help our our chances here. And as you can see, we're already down to hunting just one more of these. Ah, there we go. You can see we have a ridiculous amount of bite now. We are quite far up a level. I've added a new mouth to help facilitate that. And remove some parts and replace some parts. The parts you add, of course, as I've mentioned, will improve your relations and will make it easier for you to kill or befriend other creatures. And of course, that's all what evolution is about in this game. Befriending and killing. Killing and befriending. Two great tastes that taste great together. Come on, everybody. We should, uh, befriend and kill some things today. Always befriend and kill some things, wherever you go. Well, maybe, maybe don't kill things. Don't, don't kill things, people. Please don't kill things. Unless it's Spore. You can kill in Spore. Well, we've got some interesting little details here. And of course, yes, the bigger the skeleton, the better the part you'll find on them, usually. Not always, but usually it goes the bigger the better. Look at these critters. Interesting little critters. I didn't really want to disturb them, so I've left them alone, because I think they're cool looking. We are almost done with Creature Stage, and we're heading towards one of my favorite cutscenes in the game. I believe after I kill a few more critters, I'll be in prime shape to uh, evolve into Primal Stage. Well, Tribal Stage, not Primal. What am I saying? Phantom cannot speak today. Phantom is not good words do. How does Phantom words? How does Phantom words? And I kick around a fruit for a while, and yes, you might have noticed fruit does drop from up in trees. Fruit indeed does spawn out of the trees. And these guys don't seem to like us, so let's just attack them. Quick and easy way to finish off this level. They're far weaker than us anyway. This shouldn't take long. You can see how quickly that gauge is going up. Just how... Oh dear, now they're afraid of us. You can see once they... Once they see so many of their uh, pack members get slaughtered, they end up... 
cowering in fear of you. Just one more. We'll have to kill this baby. Because I'm cruel. I guess the babies don't count as a single... Welp. There you go. Kill a baby. Evolve your bigger brain, and we're ready to go. As the game says, our brain is fully evolved. We are sapient now. No longer just a mere creature. No longer just an animal. We are people now. Gonna eat some meat? Mm, I guess scavenge a few more parts. Why not? And show off the very last few things in Creature Stage to do right before we go to Tribal Stage. Without further ado, I think it's about time, so... Let's hit that button and advance. Now, being adaptable has given us the abilities Beastmaster, which will help us socialize animals to fight or charm. We've got Bribe Bomb for Civilization. And we have Speed Demon for Space Stage. will make us quicker in Space Stage, but that's about it for Animal Stage. So, I'm going to skip the details and show you one of my favorite cutscenes in the game. Phantom Safety Pen. Signing off. Next time, fire good. See you later.